Good morning, YouTubers, and welcome once again to the eastern wing of the Stinkbug Works, where I guarantee you will never get a professional-looking video. This is stream of consciousness, totally off the cuff, completely amateur. Here's what it is. So, with that said... Welcome aboard, boys and girls, and let's talk about a secret project that I haven't mentioned up until now. And this is kind of my build it along with project. And it sort of works like this. Uh, if I need to epoxy something in here, I wait till I'm working on my main project. And when I mix up enough epoxy for my main project, I come over here and I epoxy what needs to be epoxied into here. And I was getting near completion. Oh, first let's talk about what this is. This is from get a load of this. This was probably the early to mid 1990s. So this thing, this thing could conceivably be 30 years old. So anyway, this is a Groppner silver bullet. It was an all fiberglass with a carbon fiber cover. It was an all fiberglass outrigger. And it was actually styled after a drag boat that was called the silver bullet and looked vaguely like this. Uh, they took a lot of poetic license in calling this a scale boat. So anyway, this was one of the earlier boats where I put my receiver up on top, mainly because this carbon fiber lid kind of acts as a shield. So I ran my antenna out there so it would have good reception. So that's the thinking there. Then this boat was originally designed to run with a car motor, what you would know as a Speed 500, a car motor on six NICAD cells. But NICADs are long gone. And, you know, Big B has had a lot of success with these long can rocket motors. And they're relatively cheap on the, the, the motor scale. So I said, I thought I'd give one a try. And I have a couple of options. I've got one that's uh, 3,400 kV, so on, on 3S, this will be a 3S boat. So on 3S, that'll turn a pretty good size prop. This is the 4,000 kV version. And I think I'm gonna go with that in this build so I can run a smaller prop and spin it faster. That'll still turn a pretty good size prop, but I can get props up to 40 millimeters that will fit on a 1 8 shaft. So let's talk about the drive. I originally planned on this, this old fuller strut I had in my parts bin, and I was going to use a, uh, sorry, I was going to use a uh, 1 16th inch wire drive with an eighth inch stub shaft. And like I said, with this, with this, I can turn props up to 40 millimeters. So in the long run, I think that's gonna be my final solution. And we'll get to my other workarounds. Um, I also have at my disposal a uh, 3 16th shaft that drops down to 1 8th with a 0 0.130 cable. Now I'd need to put in a bigger strut to do that. And herein lies the problem. This is the current state of the art of 3 16 strut. It kind of dwarfs what's in there. It, it just wouldn't work. Then again, there's the Octura one and this tube, this Teflon stuffing tube is a 
nice snug fit in this nose cone, so I could get away with this Octura one. I'd have to cut the fin off. The fin was for Catarans. But uh, I could get away with this and run a 3 16 shaft with the... Uh, and then I got, have, of course, a 3 16 shaft with a 3 16 prop, so I could go huge props. But too much prop and handling becomes an issue, which is why I think I want to go with a smaller prop and spin it faster. Then there's this. Now, this is an old Fuller's strut from a cat, and it would not dwarf this thing. So that's a possibility. And here's current state-of-the-art four millimeter shaft, but that limits me to propellers I don't have on hand. I have mostly 3 16 inch and 1 8 inch with a handful of four millimeter and a handful full of four millimeter threaded. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go with this wire drive and just run those uh, VXP propellers. I can get them up to 40 millimeters. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. These rocket motors are like Lenners. They have a four millimeter shaft and the number of couplers you can find for a four millimeter sh motor shaft is somewhat limited. Now I have an old Octura one that will go to the 130 cable. So th that's uh, why I was thinking of these as a possible option. But I do have the ability to make a coupler. And so I'm thinking I'm gonna make a coupler and run this wire drive um, for just a whole number of reasons. It's a lot easier with some of the ones I'd have to take the strut off to get the cable out. And, you know, I want to be ease of maintenance. I want to be able to get the, the shaft in and out real easy without having to jump through a bunch of hoops. So that's another little project that's on the side that's in no particular hurry. And as I work on something, I'll work on this if I have a have a spare blob of epoxy or something. You know, if I'm over there making something on the lathe, well then I'll consider making a, uh, a uh, coupler at that time. But I'm not gonna go set things up just for this. I have other projects to work on. So, there you go, boys and girls. I thought I'd just give you a little insight as to something else I could always tinker around. In, uh, but the three projects I discussed earlier, the jet, the cat, and the hydro, they're definitely up first. I mean, I still have the Dona to dial in. I don't need another rigger to set up as well. So... Uh, this is in no particular hurry, but I thought I'd show you anyway. So, okay, boys and girls, until next time, jet out.